Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking at Endeavor Artemis OS, Artemis being the code name, uh, which came out mm, 25th of June, I believe. So let's take a look right after this. So we're going to talk about Endeavor OS and somewhat of a, 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 a deeper look at it anyway. Kind of pick it apart, look at some of the features that it has, and talk a little bit about each one of those. So as an overview, you can see that there's the Orion rocket placed here. So Artemis, where does it get its name from? That is the code name for this particular release of Endeavor OS. Artemis is the current project name that NASA is using for the return to the moon. I don't know if it also envelops the moon to Mars, but they're... I mean, the ultimate goal here is to get from Earth to Moon, Moon to Mars. And then uh, there will be something called a gateway that is like a orbiting space station around the Moon so that you have a place to drop supplies that then can be delivered uh, to, the, to the surface. But anyway, that's got nothing to do with the release. So <laughs> Endeavor provides kind of a basic installation so that you're, you know, you can spend the time that you need in order to customize the release the way you want it to look, right? So instead of having something like Ubuntu and, or Fedora where they make all the design choices for you, um, this leaves it up to you so that you can go in, make a lot of customizations to it, tweak it, make it look the way you want. And they also provide you with a welcome app that is a gateway to getting started. So. One of the things that with most rolling releases like this, and this is, I'm going to say it, it is, it was derived from Arch. Let's say it that way. Um, so Arch has a different, kind of a different way, approach to doing things. I'm talking about Arch Linux itself. So those that's used by people that are hobbyists and people that are enthusiasts that and advanced users that really want to get the most out of their system, right? So they, they'll they install just the right packages that they want to use, and then they'll configure them to get the, the best performance they can out of them. And then hopefully, uh, you know, they can be able to choose packages that work for them and so forth. So they can build up the system the way they want without having to carry all this other junk that the other distros provide for you. There's a welcome app that allows you to give you a getting started place that goes through kind of, here's the steps you want to take in order to get things going. So you are you have a system that you at least can get started with. So there's also a, a vibrant and active community that's around to provide help when you need it the most. So as a general rule, I try the at most, I, the best I can to get the answer I need from whatever forums are provided and there they do have a forum as well. So yeah, I try to get answers or to the questions that maybe have been asked before. Um, but you know, when all else fails, you can always approach people and say, Hey, I am having this problem. Have anybody else seen this? So what do you need to get started uh, with this release? Now, I mean, there's a lot of caveats here. So there, Right now, there are two releases that you can use. You can build this up with a x86 64-bit uh, baseline, or you can use ARM. Uh, and so I don't have that on here because I haven't installed it yet, so I don't know what the actual minimums are. Uh, but I can tell you that for the x86 side, you'll need at least 2 gig of RAM in, in order for it to come up. Uh, you could maybe get it to install with less, but then, you know, as with all things, you're not going to have enough headroom to do much. And I, my, my thinking is, is if you're, you're at a place where you're approaching a machine that's where your memory allocated to the operating system and the applications you want to run is approaching 70% or, or, or more, you're entering into a boundary layer of, I've talked to this before, about thrashing. So memory is not something you want to cheap out on. 15 gig of disk is what you need for the recommended, again, 64-bit CPU. ARM 64, if you're going to go that way, so that uh, should give you a pretty wide range. 
there aren't that many ARM devices that are 32-bit anymore. There, yeah, there's a few. Uh, I mean, there's some older ones, sure. Uh, but you'll need about anywhere from 2.5 to 4 gig of memory recommended. And it's not a mandatory thing, it's just recommended. So, to get the most out of your system. 20 gig of disk space should be more than enough uh, to at least be able to get going with it. I noticed that after the install that I chose, about 6.2 gig was in use. You'll need uh, at least 1024 by 768, possibly larger if if you're trying to do, you know, more complicated things. You need more real estate on the Windows for it. Uh, as far as the Linux kernel, it is 518. And let's talk about some of the changes that are in there. So the 518 version was released May the 22nd, 2022. So the amount of time that passed between, I think, uh, Endeavor Artemis came out the 23rd of June. So there was about a month and a day <laughs> between when the 518 kernel came out and they packaged up a, uh, a snapshot in order to call it Artemis. The, they being the Endeavor folks. So, so one of the other things that's in here is that it now supports user events. Now, um, user events have always been a part of Linux, but what we're talking about here is the ability to use it to trigger something in your code like for uh, probably more for developers in this example but there's probably other things you could use it for uh, one thing uh, that for the developer would be so I want to uh, I have a trace uh, function in the program but I have to go in and uh, modify a variable or I have to configure it on disk and then the program has to be restarted well, you don't have to do that anymore. You could trigger the if you could trigger the event, have your application look for that event, and then trigger your trace to see what's going on. So if you're having problems with the code, then yeah, you could do things like that. Um, so also there's support for Intel's indirect branching tracking, uh, Intel CPUs of course only. Uh, also there's improvements that have been made to the scheduling performance for AMD Zen processors. I mean, it's not that it's a big issue, but they uh, tweaked it to make it more performant. Let's put it that way. Uh, there's also improvements to the header files. Uh, now we're talking about the C library header files or the, or the user slash include. And those improvements should speed up compile time. So they're really trying to make things a little quicker, uh, at least from a standpoint of a compiler speed. Also, ButterFS has support now for encoded I.O. in this version of the kernel, which is good. Uh, one of the problems with C, as everybody knows, is the bounds checking on mem copies is <laughs> it leaves a lot to be desired. And sometimes we have out-of-bounds crashes with applications that are not correctly staying inside of the boundaries of the memory they've allocated. But in this case... Uh, they have also created stricter memcopy boundary checking, and that's done at compile time. The other one is kind of esoteric, but I, I can tell you that I know what this is about. So uh, before C11, what is C11? C11 is a standard for C, meaning 2011, the C standard from 2011. The current one that Linux kernel subscribes to is C89. And I, I I know there's been a lot of good reasons why they they just kind of put that off. It's like, oh, I don't know if we want to face that that uh, hurdle or not. But they finally did it uh, in, in 518. They finally moved to C11. But not only did they move to C11, they also put into place mechanics that allow them to easily change it in the future. So I think that's a good thing. Uh, it's always good to move along with the standard space because, yeah, then you get newer constructs in the code that you can use to build things out with. What about changes to Endeavor Artemis OS itself? Well, <laughs> we talked about the name already, uh, but this is an ISO refresh. So because Endeavor OS is a rolling release, they snapshot in time. That you know, this is uh, this has got all the package and the version numbers complete for this date, and the reason you do that is so that if you're picking up one, let's say from a year ago, you don't have all that accumulation of packages you have to update. So it makes it easier for those people that want to jump in 
uh, into the rolling release. Now, as far as people that already have it, they've already got it because they've updated at some point and they have all the latest packages that are in Artemis already. So, yeah, so it just, yeah, existing users don't have to do anything with it. Uh, but this release of Endeavor is I th the first time I have heard of anyone doing an installer for ARM. And they do use calamaris for it. Uh, they are supporting currently Raspberry Pi uh, support uh, for Odroids N2 and N2 Plus uh, devices, which is their flagship machines. And then there's more on the way. They have plans to do Pinebook. So, yeah, I don't know what else will come from after that. But they do have plans to. Whoop, they do have plans to continue. So. Uh, all right, so some of the packages that have been updated, Calamari's is 3.260, Firefox 101.0.1, Linux kernel 5.18.5 is the patch level. And that will change. Uh, Mesa, Mesa 22.1.2, uh, the Xorg server 21.1.3, and the NVIDIA DKMS drivers 5.15.48.07. So... Yeah, that's pretty current. That's very current, in fact. I guess what we'll do now is we'll we'll spend some time and we'll just install this and walk through it together so you can see how it's put together. All right, so we'll go ahead and boot it up into the live environment. And then we'll get it installed. All right, so um, we have a, a welcome screen here uh, that's tries to walk me through things. So I can install community additions if I want, or there's the ARM installer if I'm installing this on ARM. Um, there's a custom install plot if you want to customize your install process or you want to update the mirrors. But for now, we're just going to take the default. And I'll, I'll use the online method since I am online with this. Just get this a little bigger. Okay, Calamari's is asking me for my language, and it's American English. Yep. My region, U.S., America, Chicago. And then my keyboard type, which is English, U.S. I'm going to erase. This is a BIOS. I don't know if there's a UEFI uh, version of this or not. You can, you can install ButterFS right here if you want to. Uh, I'm going to do XFS. And you can either choose if you're going to put up a server or you want to tweak it, build it up yourself. Uh, you can do that. There's XFC4, i3, which is a window manager. These are the 8 plus 1 window manager. So, yeah, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight of them. I'm going to, uh, I think I'm going to do Budgie today. Just because I want to. Uh, and then you can choose if you want other other things with it. So, yeah. And then we'll do this. And we'll go ahead. Stole it. I'll be back when this is done. Okay, so we're all done. It is 322. This started at 319. About three minutes to install. And yeah, we'll go ahead and restart it. I'm just going to walk through a couple of the things on the welcome menu. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's all I'm going to do today, just to give you kind of a feel for set some of the uh, cursory setup. All right, so the first thing we would do here is update the mirrors for Pac-Man and pick your country to get, get them at least close to you so they'll be a little faster for you. And then it'll rate which servers are the best, and then it will ask you to save that mirror list out. So we'll do that, and you have to give it your root password. 
and we should be good. We'll go ahead and do a check on the update for the system. Nothing to do. Uh, I can clean up my packages. I can put in a notifier for uh, when it's doing updates. And then I can go into the display manager and I can change my display resolution. So that's what I'm going to do first. Uh, let's set it to do a set and quit. All right, looks better. Um, <clears throat> I can also change the wallpaper if I want. See, we can download some additional ones here. Let's do that. There they are. Hello. Okay. I made it a little darker. Got rid of the stars. So, yeah, that's... Um, you have your basic configuration here, so uh, if you want to tweak things, you can. Uh, for example, I could go over here. I could set up my widgets to arc dark. And I could also set up a different set of uh, icons. I think that'll show, yeah, you see it down here. It's already done it. Let me, um, hmm, let's see if we can find. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's see. Change the cursors, theme, desktop. I can put the icons out on the desktop if I want them. Go ahead and do that. I can also include active mounts. I don't have any at the moment, but if I did, they would appear out here too. Um, let's see what else we want to do. Oh, bottom panel. Right, there we go. We turn it into a dock. See if it faved it. It did. Okay, so that's good. So I, it's really easy then. That makes it easy. This, of course, will be. And we'll fave this one too. I think, uh, I mean, basically, I, I we could mess with this all day. I will, I will, I mean, I can't, I, this benchmark will take about four hours, but. I will benchmark it and then I'll come back and show you the results of that in a separate video. So what's some of my final thoughts on this release? I mean, whenever you're in a rolling release situation, that is not generally something that I would recommend to a beginner. And the reason for that is there's just a lot to manage, there's a lot to think about, and there's a lot to learn. Uh, before you enter into one of these type of releases. So I hope you enjoyed this look today at Endeavor Artemis uh, OS. And again, I, I just haven't done this one in a while. And I thought, well, I think it's time to, to do this one again. And uh, and because they're, I think it's kind of cool that they've dedicated it to the, to the NASA moon mission. Ho hope to see you again the next time. Please like and subscribe. Bye for now.